we're now going to make some changes to the save view that we've just created. So we created the detail markers or the detail drawings of the bathroom at a scale of 1 to 10. But when we placed it onto our layout, we saw that they're quite big. So what if we wanted to change the scale? Is it too late to do that? No. How do we change the scale? The point of a saved view is it defines what we see, the layer combination, how we see it, the settings, the overrides, and the options, and the scale in which it's represented. So we see that our detailed bathroom plan, let's go to both of them, but one individually, are 1 to 10. Now if I change that to 1 to 20, we're now talking about 1 to 20 at a 1, which means that would be 1 to 40 at a 3. That's a bit of a strange number and we tend to not use 1 to 40. So instead we'll use a custom scale in this case. So we're going to change the scale of this to be 1 to 25 at a 1, which means that if we then changed it to a 3, we'd be talking about 1 to 50, which is a standardized size. So let's change both of these, custom, 1 to 25. And what we see happen is that we effectively lose our saved views. Our saved views are there, but they're sort of now hidden. And we have to be a little bit careful about changing scale, because when we do change scale, we lose, effectively lose our viewpoint. If I was to restretch this, we see that the model's still there, we're just viewing it in a different place. And so what we'd either need to do is to restretch that out and redefine where we were looking at, or, which can be a little bit tricky if we're not sure what we're looking for, we can move the view. So let's click on this again. What's this called? It's called move sub element. So what I'm doing is looking into my drawing and trying to find or reposition where that saved view is. As you can tell, that's a little bit strange. It's a little bit hard to do. So sometimes the easiest way is just to redefine the view by stretching the window and then relocating where it's supposed to be. But that still is actually a fair bit of work and it's a little bit annoying to do. So sometimes the easier way is actually just to delete that view and then re-import that view. So re-import the reflected ceiling plan. We see that now that now brings it into scale straight away and then just like before I can now stretch it down to the view that I need. So two different methods of doing basically the same thing. Now once that's done, once we have our save views, we can see that they're a lot smaller, they're, they're more than half, they're less than half the size, they're t twice as small as they were before, which means we can now definitely fit not only our plans, but also our elevations, internal elevations on this one layout. And there's room around the outside, so if we want to add in dimensions or any other text or annotations, that's going to be very easy to do as well. We'll come to that later because we have to understand the um, impacts of what will happen when we try to do that. All right, what's next? We now need to go back and link our detailed marker to this layout. So we see that it's currently saying two, drawing two on page 6000. Why is it doing that? Let's go into the settings and have a look. When we go to our marker text, we can see currently we have this both set up as custom, which meaning, which means it's not giving us a linked drawing. It's still set as source marker, but we're overriding what information it should actually be providing for our source marker with custom text. So the first thing we're going to do is to change this custom to referenced drawing. And we have two rows. We have a first row and a second row. So for now, I'm going to leave this as show drawing ID and change this one to show layout ID. 
And it's now come up with a hashtag to say, okay, well, you want me to reference it to a drawing and you want me to reference it to a layout, but which ones? I don't know. So that's what we need to now tell it to do. Now, like I said before, we don't care that this detail marker can produce a two-dimensional drawing. We don't want to use that one. Instead, we want to use the linked marker option. So I'm going to change this to linked marker, and now it's going to ask me where do we want to link it to. I have four different options. The selected viewpoint, the selected drawing, the first drawing of the selected viewpoint, or the first drawing of the selected view. Now, they all work in different ways. I want to select the selected drawing and I'm going to scroll down until I find the page. So we're now talking about layouts. I'm going to find the page that I want. So what I want to do is to scroll down until I find my detailed layouts and then I want to choose the layout. So we're not talking about drawings just yet. We're talking about the layout 5000 but then I have to link it to a particular drawing on that layout. And so I'm going to choose the one that's called Detailed Bathroom Plan for now. Press OK. So we see that that's now changed to a hashtag 5000. Why a hashtag? Because it's not reading it as a referred drawing. It's reading it as a reference ID. So now that's saying Drawing 2 on page 5000. So is that good? Yes, in a way, it's doing what I'm asking it to do. But if I was to now change from my detailed, sorry, let's change that from my general arrangement floor plan, which says that I'm looking for detail or drawing number two on page 5000. If I change that to my RCP, so my overall reflected ceiling plan, and I'm now looking for my detailed reflected ceiling plan, it's still referencing me to the same drawing, drawing number two on page 5000. So what's the problem with that? I'd either need to have two different detail markers or I'd need this detail marker to change twice. Neither of those is a very good option. They're both wasteful. So what's very important? It's very important that it's taking me to the right page. What's not important? It's not really important that I am being told which drawing it is on the page because there's not that many drawings. I'm not going to get confused. So instead what I'm going to do is to change this to show nothing. I don't want anything to be shown in my first text box, but I only want to see the layout in my second text box. Or if I really wanted to be complicated, I could change this to say custom and write one and two. So by doing that I'm saying refer to drawing one and two on page 5000. Now that's a bit silly as well so I may as well just change that to referenced and not show anything at all and it's taken me to page 5000 and then once I go to page 5000 I can figure it out. It's not that complicated. So that's the next process that I want you to do. We're going to change the scale of those drawings down to 1 to 25 which means when we go into the save view we click on the drawing, view settings, and then under scale we have to choose custom and then we type in 1 to 25. And again the reason why we're using 1 to 25 is because when we then reduce our A1 down to an A3 drawing, that'll mean that we're halving our scale. So we're now going from a scale of 1 to 25, which is a, an okay scale. It's not bad. It's not brilliant, but it's okay. And we're now representing at 1 to 50, which is a good scale. Better than 1 to 40.